All right, YouTube, we're going to play some more blue-white tonight. Changed up a couple cards the last time I played. I just pretty much just changed everything, every single league I play, because I don't, you know, don't have anything super tuned yet. But we're already in a league. We're going to jump into it. I played a, lost a mono-red prison here, which is kind of beat me up. And then this was a sweet match against, like, a burn deck that just went, that I ended up picking up, which felt kind of nice. <clears throat> I cut a Jace, which was kind of, I don't know, like this card is just like pretty underwhelming to what I've been playing with it. Like it's it's not nearly as good as like this Planeswalker, where it's really, it's like, or it's really good is when you top deck it on like turn 10 and you have a bunch of mana to do stuff with the Brainstorm. The, um... The Teferi is really good, like on five, seven, you know, five, six, seven, eight, when you're just trying to develop. All right, we'll keep this hand. We got double as Canta. Oh, so we're playing against Mr. Storm Guy, so we're probably going to get taken to the cleaners here. This is a tough matchup for the home team. Probably gonna end up just jamming jamming our as Kanta on two and hoping that works. Cause we don't, you know, I'm not gonna play. I'm just gonna kinda hope he doesn't have it here and he's not gonna <clears throat> respect what I have going on. Yep, we're just gonna play search and hope that he doesn't kill us. Shock is a little concerning. I wonder why he would shock. I wonder why he would do that. I mean, unless he's just got it like super rolled out, which he easily could have. Opt. All right, so we get some metamorphoses. Yeah. Do we make it? Do we get another turn? Cast in flames. It's kind of a, it's not really a weak pass in flames. He's gonna get at least he's gonna get two sleight of hands out of it. I don't really see how five cards in hand, I don't really see how he breaks from here. He's just gonna remand. He's probably just gonna remand. Or just a second grape shot. Noxious revival. Opt to draw. Yeah. Alright, we're not gonna make him put it on the stack. There, as we are dead as a doorknob. Oh, Moto's freezing up on me. All right. <clears throat> so the negates, dispels, surgicals. Probably like these come in as well. Cards we are looking to take out. These two probably our paths are worse than our ousts, maybe. Search is probably kind of slow. Shave on a Jace. I kind of want to shave on some terminus, but I figured that they're gonna have the uh, the empty plan. To cut like a couple more cards. It's timely is not good. Let me see what this looks like. These illuminations will likely be these over here. What do you got, Paul? Got two rats. Uh, three ways to deal with um, with empty tokens. I think this is what we're gonna do. Keep some removal for the bears. So let's try this out. 
<clears throat> I'll even see the deck list on uh, the Stream Decker app there, Rucifer. <clears throat> All right, I would like to play first, and I would like to mulligan. Oh, this hand's... I think you can't mulligan a hand like this, but it just doesn't really have exactly what we're looking for. Like the cryptic commands are good if we can make it. We probably can just top that rest in peace and hope that we get to, you know, that we hit our land drops. I think it's going to be a little more difficult for him to kill us um, without a graveyard. Or at least if he doesn't have a graveyard, he's going to be, he might have to like, without a graveyard, he'll have to like go the empty route and then we can deal with the, we can like get around the empty plan with bias some time, then hopefully we get to Terminus. We still have two Snapcasters in our deck, which would be kind of bad, feel bad draws, but we gotta... All right, so there's Brawl. Removal spell here will be very good. No, we did not hit one, and we did not hit a land also, so... <clears throat> so this is probably how how this matchup ends. Most of the time when somebody untaps the Baral, it does not go well. Oh wow. He's like bricking off here. No, he did hit a land. It's coming to play untapped. Alright, Serum Visions isn't bad. All right, so we're going to put both of these on top. Probably want to draw the land first. Drawing both of our Snapcasters in the face of this Brawl after we hit the rest in peace was not great, but I don't know if I'm supposed to board out the Snapcaster Mages because I think sometimes you just need to, like, you just need a clock. But I might be wrong. All right. It's going to empty. Okay. Kind of a mini empty. I'm just going to start like upkeep, tap, draw. Just because I don't want to, you gotta like, you gotta figure something out. You gotta buy some time to find, to either get to this terminus. This makes him like tie up man on his turn. Tap draw. Not the click we knew about. Though the click's not even that good right now. Because they've already done their thing. Put two cards on top. That's not good. Now you send Manamorphos into both of them. I could have just taken a shot, I guess. But I feel like it's so easy for him to kill me through... Um, to kill me through just Cryptic Command, that, like, I would rather just kind of try to get it res to resolve, have it resolved so that I can cycle through my hand to get to this Terminus. Puts Grape Shot and Grape Shot into their hand.
Again, there's not a lot that I can do from this spot. Just a little, spells are just a little too clunky. He's got Grape Shot, can respond to the Storm Trigger. I don't know if you can, how does that work? Storm, cast spell, copy it for each. When you cast this spell, okay, so you can't like bump one up by remanding it. You get it back to your hand, but. And he's got a remand, then the game is over. Oh, he doesn't. He's just done. All right. Well, those are both of his grape shots, I think. Yeah, I think they only play two grape shots. They might play three. I'm not exactly sure. But I mean, we're just going to do the same thing, I think. Tap draw. All right, we can terminus the board next turn. And just hope that this resolves. gifts. Okay, they're repealing my... Alright. We're going to get that down as soon as possible next turn. And then I'll probably click them in their draw step. Put your card on top. Ritual... Empty, okay. So we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. We can go path, snap, path, block, take three, and then we can go oust. Yeah, we can just deal with them that way, which isn't a great way to do, but it looks like what we've got to do. So let's just go. Might as well do it with this one here. And then we can pass next turn as well. I'm giving him a lot of time doing this, but it's kind of what I got going on. I could oust my own Snapcaster Mage. But no, I don't want to do that. then trade, take three, and then just go path, snap, path, eat, and the board's clear again. We're just like dead as a door, not the lightning bolt, but I don't think they bring in lightning bolt against us. Should use this path. Oh, all right. Can't cast that. Would have been nice if I'd have done that at the end step, because then I could have gotten this click down, but such is life.
the Snapcaster may just turned out to be okay. Now we trade off the board. I cast rest in peace. Then hopefully the click takes me there. <clears throat> what is this? <clears throat> oh, man. We will reveal a terminus. That was a good one. Better lucky than good. So they have a lot of these goblins, so I probably should bring in more of these in the next game. I could have clicked him. Okay. All right, so now we go to my draw step, or my main phase, play this, draw step, we'll click them, and then we're just going to fire this colonnade up with this Vendillion click, and hopefully that, that does it for us. We could click ourselves because this is so bad, but I think we've got a game plan here. I don't think we take anything. <clears throat> so gonna, Paul's going to go fish in here. And we're just trying to crack him for seven. Oh, what do you get? No, he's remanding his. Okay. Nope, oh, missed. Three turn clock. I guess it's a four turn clock because they're at 21, not 22. He's not going to take any pain from these shipping reefs. I wonder how many ways in his deck he's got to win left. So we've gone through two. Like, he might need a bear to kill me. Put one on the bottom, put one on top. Draws the one he puts on top. So he's got a desperate ritual. And he's splitting them. Opt. Draws card he wants. Pieces. Do you piece into another grave shot? Yeah. He had one more. Yep, they got it. I guess he did go through most of his deck, so he was bound to find it at some point. If there was one more there. That's what I was that's what I was wondering if we had gotten through. The rest of that. But Paul had he had one more. I guess that's supposed to be a pretty poor matchup for this deck. It's been two rough two rough games so far. So we can win two more, get the three two. We're going to mulligan this. Yeah, this hand's pretty good. Got a cantrip to smooth this out. And then illuminations to... I just put that on the bottom. 
All right, let's put this on top, put this on top as well. This Jace is going to be important. All right, playing as Hollow One. I think it's a lot of Hollow One today. So we're going to draw our island. We don't want either of these. We're probably going to end up cycling this illumination because we just got to hit. We need to give ourselves as many looks to get our fourth land drop on time and have it be a planes. Oh, double blood gas. Well, at least they're not going to be delving me, but they could they could just make this flame blade adept huge. Which they're not. Just three is three is good. We'll take that. All right, Snapcaster Serum Visions. The Snapcaster is just going to run into one of these blood ghasts. So we can keep this island and hope that one of our top. But the problem is, if we keep this island, then we're still like two turns off of. Um, we're still two turns off of, like, next turn, then Brainstorm, play a land, then Miracle. I, I think it's just too slow. I think keeping this land's actually going to make it too slow to play the Jace and then be able to Miracle. Do I need to hit a White Source? All right, maybe it's probably better than in the average draw step. Just getting the Jace online. It's going flame blade adept. All right, we're just gonna soak up as much damage as possible. Could also like bounce this flame blade adept. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I might just bounce that hollow one now. I'll be right back. Where's your right here? Yep. Okay. Okay. Wow, they just conceded the game. They must have to leave. Like they just, my opponent just scooped. I don't have any idea why they did that, but. Oh, okay. So they, they must have just had to finish up the match there. All right. Well, we'll take it. We're actually going to take this. Hang on. Sponsor page. I'm going to put that up here. I'm actually going to take it. just going to restart Moto. So give me a second here. I appreciate everybody for showing up here. My name is Dylan Hovey. You guys are watching my stream. I'm a part of the Card Hoarder Network. So you should check out Card Hoarders. They're the best magic online bot chain in the business. Um, I'm also sponsored by Gamer Craze, which is a store in upstate New York. It's where I learned to play Magic. Their Crystal Commerce is linked below. They buy and sell at a really competitive rate for paper cards. So if you need paper cards, just check them out. Uh, if you ever uh, miss part of the stream, want to see it, I always put all of that up on YouTube. And if you want to chat with Magic about me, check me out on Twitter. Most of the time, I play a lot. Of, I play a lot of Modern, but I am excited for the Ravnica standard, and I occasionally play Legacy. Yeah, sometimes I sometimes I delve into that format. I like playing the I like playing Delver decks. 
So that's kind of my cup of tea. So let's Moto's on the way here. Open league. Let's hope we can get the uh, get the three two here. I played against a lot of Hollow One lately. Like Hollow One, Burn in the Mirror are probably what I'm playing against the most. I don't play that much humans. But I guess some people are like a little down on that deck. I'm not sure. I don't know quite enough about. I think it's good. I don't think it's. Uh, some people say it's a worse Spirits deck, which it might be. I haven't played against the Banned Spirits deck a lot lately. Should check that out. Maybe play a couple leagues with that at some point. I'm excited for um, the new standard. Really excited for some of the Jumpstart cards. Those all look pretty good. So... Pretty pumped. Pretty pumped for that. Yeah, all these company decks. They're all all these uh, vile decks are really expensive because they have noble hierarch and um, whatever else the other card is in there. They've got noble hierarch plus um, cavern of souls and horizon canopy. Those are all really really expensive on moto. I really like this deck. I like these illuminations a lot. Like these illuminations are pretty sweet. Here, they kind of like give me a, give a lot of late game power, which I feel excited, which is nice, while also being something that you can just like cycle through in the early game when you need it. Sorry, two minutes in. <clears throat> Usually never takes this long to start another to find another match. Yeah, I definitely played around with a lot of the numbers. Like I played like two Snapcaster Mages, played three, I played four Illuminations for a little while. That was like a little much because I like Serum Visions. Hey, uh, Black 800. Um, tried three Terminus because of like, without Opt being in the deck, the Illuminations are a little worse. But without Opt being in the deck, the Terminus are just like a tad worse. Um, tried three Jaces, but then I played two. I like two a lot better, I think. I also want to try this deck out. I saw this deck top eight of the Modern Challenge. The blue-white deck that played, uh, Monastery Mentor. And then also played, um, played Mentor and... Uh, Bobbles. Oh, here we go. We've been paired. How's it going? MTG Max. Um, the land's not very good. I get a redraw. I get a couple lands. It's okay. I think I'm going to keep this. But... Somebody told me I should mulligan this. I would not fault them for doing that. Hey, how's it going? All right, that's a pretty good hit. Play this. We're likely still going to cycle this illumination. <clears throat> How are you doing, Nameless? You still playing some Death Shadow? It's still happening. 
I saw Ben Jones been playing a lot of Death Shadow, and he's up top of the leaderboard right now. We're playing against another. We're playing against like Mardu. You still playing the same sort of list? You change things up? So it's like we probably are playing against Mardu. I really want to cycle this. So I think I'm actually going to cycle this in response because hitting a land is more important than them taking any spell. It's not like working a lot. Yeah, that's tough. Same list. Just keeping it consistent. I haven't played Shadow in a couple weeks. I've been trying to trying to branch out, play some different decks. I played a, played a Ironworks a little bit lately. I played this deck a little bit lately. I'm probably playing against Hollow One. If I had to assume. So let's let's field to fix our mana, get an island, and then see our visions. Alright, did you it's not bad. Can you beat in the Baltimore top eight? Oh, yeah. I, I played it for a little while. What do you think about Junda Shadow after Path to Decay? I don't think Path to Decay... I'm not really sure if that how if that card like fixes the problems that those decks have. I think I want this one. I don't think I want this. Like, we've already got plenty of fours, and then putting this on the bottom, same thing as cycling it. I kind of want to try... Just go back to my control roots, giving humans a rest. Teferi, Teferi is very nice. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Teferi fan. Fan like Teferi is way better than Jace in this deck. I want to, I want to play. So I've been kind of like dirtling around. I'm really excited for the next standard format. <clears throat> what is this, Gurmag Angler? All right, we're. I can run my Jace out into this and then bounce this. And that leaves me a little open to a Flame Wake Phoenix. Not really a little open, kind of a lot open. But I'm not really doing anything else. Like I can go like field into Logic Knot, which isn't great. I think the highest upside is to just go, then bounce this Gurmag Angler, then hope we don't get Flame Wake Phoenixed. So wait, I've been working on something for Standard. Um, it's not on here, dang it. I'm excited to try uh, standard deck with the jumpstart mechanic. There's like a blue-white control deck with uh, jumpstart cards and then play Nexus to Fate in that one. So you put a Flame Wake in the graveyard and then they found a way to... They're gonna... This has to be Tassiger, right? No, it's Gromag. Yeah. All right, well, that didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. Is there a list anywhere? I I had it on Moto, but I guess it didn't save over there. Oh, that would have been nice to hit. We're just gonna pass. Look to like field something in Logic Knot, and then try to get back into it a little bit. We need we need like a removal spell or something. But I want to play like I want to play the two like the two mana one might not be very good. The um, the two mana uh, jumpstart card that just like think the poor man's think twice. So is that worth logic nodding? It probably is because I just want to use my mana. Yeah, like we've got to do something here. Alternatively, I could just like cryptic tap it. It's probably not actually. Yeah, we're just going to go get the Logic Knot. So I, then I definitely shouldn't have done it like this. I should have thought about it more. Because, like, I'm just going to Cryptic Tap my way out of this. So just let it be. That settle's not bad. They can settle and then they can still might not be able to play Gurmag Angler. Hopefully they just jam. Hopefully they just jam a creature here. That doesn't count as a creature, dude. Why would you play into my obscure card? Though this card's seeing a lot more play in modern. I know I've gotten blown out by this card a couple times. <clears throat> I, was, I played against a guy in the SCG that was in Baltimore in May, 
And I remember I was playing humans, and he just destroyed me with this card. I ran face first into it. I didn't even think about it. This settle is very good right now. It's like, give me... And then if we rip a land, we can play Teferi on an open board with Logic Knot. They just game... Oh, wow. They don't even get any basics. All right. Come on, land. Game over. Yeah, this card is so good. This card is just so, so good. So you get to play it. And, like, something that I really like about this card is that it moves towards its ultimate. Like, like so Jace zeroes to get card advantage. This thing moves to its ultimate. Um, I kind of want to counter this. Though... The problem is that if I counter this, they can still go one, two, three, four, five, six. They can still go Gurmag Angler plus. They might discard their Gurmag Angler. Yeah, we're just going to let this go. They did discard their Gurmag Angler. And we kept our same hand. I think. Yeah, they just scoop it up there. But this card, like. Gains card advantage while moving to end the game, which is sweet. Like this, this thing puts on like a lot of pressure. Like obviously Jay snowballs, but the nice thing about Teferi is also you can play it, and um, you can play the Teferi, and it goes up. How do I say this? It's like it helps you use all those cards you draw because it doesn't cost as much mana. So the timelies are actually pretty good. The searches are not that good, I don't think. I had to cut two more cards. Usually, like whenever I have to cut cards, I kind of shave Jace. Snapcaster Mage isn't that good, so let's cut a Snapcaster. Especially if I hit Rest in Peace, then it's absolutely awful. Probably want this. Let's go like this. I always have to like whenever I go sideboarding, I have to move these illuminations over here to like look at my curve because. You know, these are one drops when they have to be. They're only two drops when it's, like, gravy. I think this card is so much better than Opt. And this card is so much better than Opt. Like, man, I've just broken so many games wide open with this card. Like, I'm down to Jace, which would, you know, feel like it would kind of hurt in the mirror. But I felt like the illuminations are just so nice. Uh, the current version of this deck, I'm on, plays Ancestral Visions. Price takes me back. Yeah, Ancestral Visions is sweet. Um, I think I'm going to keep this hand. We can rest in peace. Play rest in peace on two. If we need to do this surgical for any other reason, like if we fail, we have a surgical. And like the rest of my hands, it's just pretty good. We're going to do fine lands, but we do play 25 of them. So. Alright, this hand's not very good against this card, specifically. I'd like to keep that Baneside Angel. But that's another card. Like, this is the difference between Serum Visions and Opt. Like, you can Serum Visions early in the game and just set up what you're doing. Which I like. Hopefully we don't get Hollow Wind here. Okay. I will surgical. No, I shouldn't. I, oh man, I should have done it in response to that. All right, there's a hollow one. See now, this is where I'm screwed. I should have done it in response to the flame blade adept trigger, so that I could, so that I could have um, in response to the flame blade adept trigger, so I could have gotten it. Yeah, I'm just going to let this go. Took my rest in peace. Hit double surgical, though. So this thing's cracking me for eight points on this turn. Jesus Christ. So it's probably not... I kind of want to surgical the Faithless Lootings because 
if they just crack me for three, then I might be able to make it. But like, that's their whole turn. So I, I actually don't think I'm gonna surgical anything. Unless I have to. Because, like, if they're going to waste their whole turn to pump this two points, and, like, so be it. Just the Flame Phoenix, okay. Well, not just, that's not good. But we go to seven. I would like to miracle this. So now we're going to start to extract some stuff. Like, I'm probably going to take this Faithless Looting in their draw step. Let's see if we get lucky. So they just have lands, which we will take. I really wish Moto made it so that you could see this all the time. Because, like, it's technically revealed. So what do they got for good stuff? They've got a Tasker. They have a Lightning Bolt, which we're probably just, like, never beating at this point. Okay. Cryptic's nice. So we're going to be able to curve Cryptic Command into Jace. Or into Teferi, so. So you wouldn't mind if my opponent drew a business spell here. They had that, right? That counts as a business spell. Counter target spell. Draw a card. That's why I, this control deck doesn't, like, necessarily feel like a control deck to me. Like, I'm pretty sure this deck's just like a gen deck. Because, like, you don't sit back on your heels and play, like, hard permission you know, you just sit there and, like, you play, like, just enough interaction, hit one of your nutso cards, your, like, your Terminuses, and, or, like, at the, at the right time, then you just, like, card quality just takes over the game. All right, so I got to figure out what to do with that. So now we know their bolt's lethal. Their, their one of bolt is lethal. And their last card in hand is a stopping ground. All right, that's gas. That's not. Yeah, you don't have the plane building with this deck. You were greatly dead. Yeah. I have noticed that for sure. But especially with Teferi. So we're going to draw step path this. I would like to find one more spell, though. Like another counter spell, just something to keep me going. They've got nothing. So if they miss, it also kind of counts. What do we got here? All right, put that on the bottom. Put this on top. I kind of want to wait. I kind of want to ghost quarter this Bloodstain Mire next turn. I'll probably just do that next turn so that I can then fate seal them with Jace and like actually get a good fate seal. Or I could just brainstorm with Jace also. Okay. Yes, I'm likely going to just tuck this with Teferi, I think. Let me play Jace first. I definitely want to brainstorm because it lets me see more cards. Let's put this back. Oh, most we can have again. All right, they just scooped it up. All right, we did end up that 3-2. Yeah, well, I could have ticked the Jace down. Or I could have ticked the Teferi down if I needed to. All right, I'm going to grab a thing of water. Put this up here. Grab a glass of water. I'll be right back.
Ugh. All right, let's jump back into it. Well, this deck just feels like, because there's not a lot of manipulation, so it seems like it's more of you're just kind of like relying on your powerful cards to shine through and win the day. And so it just, it feels like, it just feels like a Jun deck. You know what I mean? Like you're just sitting here, you're playing like amazing cards on two. You're playing great cards on three. You're playing super powerful cards on four. Then you're playing super powerful cards on five. Then it's like you're winning the game on, you know, turn six if you have to. Then you've got good interaction on one, two. So it just feels like your whole card quality is just insane. Hey, Ray. Long joined. Eureka two two four two two. All right, we'll keep this. Our snapcaster looks a little weird, but if it's a creature deck timely enforcement can keep me up. If it's like a non if it's like a grindy mirror, we got some good grindy cards. Lotus Bloom, so we're in a lot of trouble. It's the old we cannot beat. I don't even think you're going to hate playing against Assassin's Trophy. Like like I do think that like that card's obviously very good, but I don't think it's like it doesn't fix the problem that Assassin's Trophy decks have. Like the problem with those decks is you're playing Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze just was like way too slow. If you you know like against these blue white decks, if you cast an Assassin's Trophy on something, it's already accrued a lot of value. Or if you're hitting a land, you know. So like I think Assassin's Trophy is obviously a very good card. I don't think that it really fixes a lot of the problems. Again, we're not really going to play around anything. We're not going to hold up. <sighs> yeah, exactly. Like, like the, the Assassin Trophy is very good. It's a good card. Like, it's a good upgrade. The black-green deck should be happy to have it. But I do think that – I don't think that it fixes the problems, those decks. I would be excited to play Assassin Trophy in like a Jun Death Shadow deck. The problem with the Jun Death Shadow decks is that like you struggle against humans. And like and again, if you're you need to like the best way to interact with those powerful permanents you want to kill is to just counter them. Wow, my opponent's gonna miss a land drop. That is good for the home team. The counter spell here would be gas. Wow. I am so good at this game. Though this can just come off and they can like they would need to have this Lotus Bloom. Bloom, Ad Nauseam, Angel's Grace, Pact, Spoils. We're going to let Spoils happen. Because Spoils just kills them every once in a while. I won a match by that earlier. My opponent would turn one. Turn one Spoils, and they just lost. Just like that. Like, nice card. What were they looking for? They were, they were looking for Pact of Negation. Just like super LOL. <laughs> All right, so we want these. Oh, we want so many cards. Get these out of here. Get this. Get this. Oh, we want the Stony Silence. Cut these. <clears throat> it's too many cards. We're never going to resolve any of these cards. So we don't need these. We can probably keep our ousts just in case they run out like the Mana Monkey or something. And then maybe like a Miser's Terminus for that reason. Really don't want to play ever play Path to Exile against a combo deck. 
I think my sideboard's misbuilt. I think I, I think I need one more. I need to like look at this sideboard a little more. And because I keep having like a card or two short of where I want to be in every matchup, or I have like a couple too many cards. So if I, if I do seriously think about playing this like a larger event or a PTQ, I'm gonna take some more time and figure it out. Um, I'm going to mulligan in this hand. And we will keep this one. Escanta should be pretty pretty solid. Let's keep a land on top. I like Escanta just sitting there and doing nothing, helping to improve my draw step. We need to hit land drop, so I'm not going to run my fetch land out there. You need two stony silences. I have the stony silences in, right? Yeah. All right, hitting land drops is good for the home team. Wow, they missed their land drop? Yeah, they just missed the land drop. They kept the one lander. They mulligan? They mulled to six. Okay. I need glasses then, don't we all? We don't need that many land drops. So I am going to fight. I guess I am actually not going to fight over this Lotus Bloom. I don't have this isn't the right. I think I should make this a negate. This is Stainful Shark's been a little underwhelming. This only adds a little bit of pressure on us. Should play my tap land. So this was a negate, so I want to go like negate plus dispel. It turns out it wasn't. Wow, they're cracking that for a cantrip. Holy shnikes. And they're probably gonna run out like a pentad prism here. Okay, so they did hit their land. Yep, there's the unlife. I think we're gonna need this to fairy to win the game. So And we might have a window to play this to fairy before this Lotus Bloom comes off suspend. No, yeah we are. We can theoretically play this to fairy next turn. But that might be a little too greedy. Probably is too greedy. But with, with this Lotus Bloom in play, I'm just never going to be able to cast this to Fairy until I hit like 14 lands. Red, white, and that puts on the two colors. Okay. They only have three cards. So am I winning the game by just sitting here and not playing this Teferi out? Am I just playing to lose? They knew they would need ad nauseum plus pact negation out of four cards. But I feel like I'm not winning by just sitting back on all this. This is like my if I'm ever going to land it, it's right now. So I think I'm going to go for it. The problem is, is like, then they can, like, the problem with that is they can then interact with and just go off at instant speed. At least this makes it so they have to go off, like, they've got to go off at, uh, okay. So does, what does that do? It doesn't do anything. The problem is they can just go off with the fairy on the stack. Comes off suspend.
Oh, wow. No way. That resolve? Oh, my gosh. Put Jace in the graveyard, yes. So now we're going to draw step. No, I should actually surgical it now before they can cast it. So I'm going to surgical this, and they just scoop it up. Well, that's a good way to start out. Yeah, I definitely think we had to jam. Like, like right, wrong, or indifferent, I think we had to jam there. Because if we don't jam, then, like, they can just beat us with Teferi on the stack. And... And then we're going to be tapped low anyways. Like, we're never going to get, like, we're, they're probably going to be able to figure out a way to to go off with less, with, when we have less than two mana at some point, or they're going to be able to just overload us. I would like to play first. This hand's pretty good if we hit lands, but, like, you know, we've got to hit lands, so we're going to keep it. We have like an oust for early interaction. <clears throat> Alright, so playing against Adnaz again. Another Adnaz game with Blue White. I've seen Blue White play these lands before sometimes. Having this negate is nice if we're playing against um, Adnaz. Which we are. The second Adnaz player in a row. Now we just have to hit lands. No, it says it's my turn up here, but Moto has not moved over to my turn. There it is. Alright, cycle this. Rut row. We're probably dead now. Especially with this Lotus coming. Wait, exile another bloom. I have six cards. Six card, they split and play to land. All right. Step one to not losing, we hit a land drop. Probably gonna counter this first Lotus Boom if I get the chance to. Twenty-five. Yep. So I'm definitely just gonna counter, counter draw this thing. I think. Well, now they're putting a storage re. But like. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm definitely just gonna counter draw this because they need land. They would need land. Uh, Mana monkey. And ad nauseum. So they need four out of six to be perfect. And we do have to just like unclog our hand. If we hit a land drop, we can go to fairy plus, plus negate. So. Didn't hit a land. I'm going to be a little more conservative with the next Lotus Bloom because, like, the main reason we did that was to try to get to this Teferi. Now, this Unlife coming off, we'll let this resolve here. It doesn't matter. All right, sweet. So, we've got a chance.
but we have to untap for this. If we untap, we're going to find what we need with that illumination also. But we have to like find a way to cast this illumination without dying. Yeah, we just cast it. Show me a pact of negation. Wow, no way. Two, three, four, guide, five. Oh man. They've only exiled one guide, so they're going to be able to kill me. Right? Yeah, we'll scoop it up. We're not, I'm not going to make my opponent go through this. There's a lightning storm. What do we have coming? Next card would have been Illumination. Draw off to Fairy. We didn't Cryptic. We didn't hit a land, which kind of sucks. Probably the cycle of Illumination try to find a land, and we did. We would have. Okay, so these come in. These come in. And these cards come in. Cut Terminus, cut Settle, cut Timely. Oh, the Stroke comes in. Okay, I guess we, I guess we decided to leave in one Terminus for some, in case they have their own, like, Timelies or something like that. Some shenanigans. Yeah, that sounds great. We have a click to put the clock on, and we have an interaction, and it's cheap. So I'm liking this hand. Double bloom. Double bloom means we're likely not going to fight over the man unless we hit a stony silence. Likely gonna play this fetch land next turn. But we're not gonna be able to have to get anything with this. Because I don't necessarily want to hit many more lands before we hit actions. Like there's gonna be a time for lands. I'm not gonna draw a step click my opponent. I'm probably gonna like wait because. I'm probably going to want to get click into play. We drew our one of Terminus we left in the deck. Which is gas. I guess I could leave in my snap, my path to exiles, because I could just like path my own creatures after they do stuff. That's annoying. Probably have to counter this. Because we can go click and dispel next turn. And I probably should make it so they have to exile two monkeys if they want to do that. Not just be able to go like one and then pay it. I would like to play that Jace, but that's just not going to happen. I'm going to do this now before these resolve. I 
just choke my opponent on mana a little bit. Alright, they're casting Angel's Grace. Okay. So this must be them. Alright, well we get one of them. They draw another card. Let's hope it just wasn't packed. As long as it wasn't packed or spoils, we're in good shape. Crack both of the lotuses. That seems aggressive. Did you hit? All right, nice. That's fine. So they have City of Brass. They didn't play the City of Brass. Well, now we're just going to play this Jace and Fate Seal them. No, you can have that Temple. Then we'll start brainstorming next turn. If they put the card on top, I might continue Fate Sealing. Put it on top. So they have City of Brass in their hand still. They don't have any way to shuffle their deck, so that I think I think that ad nauseum is on the bottom. They just scoop. That's a quick scoop. So we would have drawn this. If we would have, probably would have ticked up because they kept that card on top. If we were to brainstorm, we hit one, two. God, that would have been one hell of a brainstorm. Put these back. Put these two back. Play a land. Whew. I'm actually going to keep the path in because we can path our own creature if we need to for more mana. I just don't really think that the Terminuses are ever really going to do anything. This hand is a lot of setup. It's got lands. I think double serum visions is enough. So we've got the lands that we need. We're looking for counter spells and stony silences. It's especially good for opponents to suspend a lotus bloom. Which they didn't do. I hit it to fairy, which is a way to win. This is a nice part about serum visions. You just can like like, you get to look at so many cards. It failed us there, but we get to just look at so many cards to try to fix our problems. Our opponent doesn't have a blazing hand either, so. Alright, we want both of these. It's a lot of counter magic we just hit. It's a lot of sleight of hands from our opponent. If they leave both of these on top, they went two in the bottom, okay. So we have a logic knot underneath that we don't really that we do kind of want. I guess it would have been better for me to snap. Serum Visions on that turn. So now it's like, do we want the Logic Knot? We can't cast both the Path, both of the this and the Logic Knot without it. They put two cards on top. I think I'm definitely going to field them now. They put two on top. It's going to make it so we can cast Cryptic. Let's get rid of this because it's... This one costs them life points, which might matter.
<clears throat> they're not, they can't cast the ad nods, which is kind of relevant. Probably very relevant. I probably should have, because of that, I should have played a field. Because being able to field them is pretty important. So we're just going to counter... We're going to counter draw, because we just need to, like, get these clunkers out of our hand. <coughs> this is uh, game three. This is actually the second match in a row I played ad nauseum. So I can play Teferi, which seems pretty loose. I am just gonna field this right now though. Make it so they need another they'll need another land in order to um get us with ad nods. They need a black source. We just get them with the old the old wasteland. Yeah, don't play Teferi. I think they would have been closer to playing Teferi if they didn't have, if they didn't have like this, they didn't need the second black source. Angel's Grace. Okay. You can't do anything there. All right, your last card packed. Get a packed man. Yeah, they did. So that is game. And they've got they've only exiled one Simeon Spear guide, so I'm not gonna make him go through this. Not gonna make him do everything because they've got enough Simeon Spear guides to kill me with the lightning storms. <clears throat> Them's the beats. Yeah, what are you going to do? I think you can look at the stream decker for the deck list. I think that should be linked on the stream. Those are the beats. The Twitch alert go off. Usually turn the volume on those down just because it gets obnoxious. We are going to... Uh, part of me wants to keep this hand. But that's probably stupid. All right, we'll keep this one, put that on top. My first hand might have been decent against a treetop village deck. Kind of scared against. I'm kind of scared for a bob here. I guess I should, should yield into the next up step. End step. Don't play bob. Don't play bob. Okay, Tarmac is sweet. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna grow this goy for you, buddy. Um, land, land, land. We're going to put this on top. Put this on top. I really like Serum Visions. Like, God, I think it's so crazy that people don't play Serum Visions in these decks. Like, like Opt is so medium. All right. Liliana is annoying. Um, we have lands coming. I kind of want to keep my Detention Sphere and keep my Teferi. It's either Jace or Illumination, I think. 
I feel like I should be playing Death Shadow. I still can't get over the fact that we are on UW Control. We are playing it, Archmage. I don't know what to discard. I think it's either this card or this card. Or I could just ditch a land and then just not worry about it. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm just try, gonna try to keep all of my resources and stay ahead of them that way. I think we're gonna beat their curve. Like they need something like a lingering souls next turn. So we could just go field now. Let's just get rid of this thing. So we have a land on top. Nope. Get this out of here. If they decay this, they decay this. Like, such is life. At least they're not adding to the board. Let's see what you're playing home. Yeah, that's what I'm playing. It's right here. They had a pulse. Got me with that pulse. So now we discard the cantrip. And then we can go, we actually can go Jace, Bounce, Tarmogoyf. And then... So if we go Jace, Bounce, Goyf, then our opponent has to choose to either Treetop Village, the Jace, and if we draw a land, it really helps out a Teferi. Alternatively, we could just ditch Jace, Illumination, and then try to hit something with a Teferi on tap. I think I like that better. Yeah, I, I know Treetop gets me. It was kind of like a like I, I really like like this is the prize. I think we're gonna discard this Jace, Illuminations, and then between the next four cards. Look for a way to deal with this tunnel life. Illuminate in response to Liliana activation. That makes sense as well. I'll blindly discard, discard Jace if I want to, Archmage. I don't appreciate your attitude. I think we're ditching this colonnade. No, that makes sense. So this puts us to seven. If we discarded Jace, then we'd be dead next turn. So now I kind of want to play Jace and dig for I have a six and hit a six outer. We are losing. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to play Jace and brainstorm because we have six outs to hit to kill this Tarmogoyf right now. I think that's better than playing Liliana. We could bounce this also. I didn't even think about that. I could just bounce the Goyf. Which I believe is what I'm going to do. Just try to buy us a couple more draw steps. Uh, yield until next end step. My card is entirely bad against... Previous versions. 
Yeah, so now if this goes at Jace and they don't have a land, then we do get to play this Teferi while we're not under duress, which is this is what we were going for. Probably should have cycled that a little bit, maybe. So a land would be sick here. All right, we didn't hit that, which is unfortunate. But yeah, I guess I could have cycled to give me one more shot at a land next turn, but I didn't know the click was there, and I kind of just wanted to keep my two for one. Now I think I'm out of ditch. I just don't have time to cast this click. I likely have to, and I should have thought about that beforehand. But I likely have to cycle this Illuminations. I should have done that in response to the tick up. They ditch a tireless tracker. Jeez. So they must have two threats here. We can tuck this thing. Where's this treetop going? This treetop. Oh, the, the treetop could prevent uh, Teferi tuck. Oh, they're just going to put me to one. Interesting. So they must have a way to a threat to play here. Because th that's odd. Because I can just go like hit this, hit this on the board. Oh yeah, I didn't even cycle this. Well, I, I was just I was confused by their play, so I wasn't thinking about this. I think I'm just going to tuck this because now I can, like, if they go to fire this thing up, I can kill it and then, um, and then illumination still. So hit this. That makes me nervous. So I can just get two cards. I could blow this up. Because they have a Tarmogoyth. Blow this up. One, two. Get a land back. Cycle my Illumination. Let them take the Cryptic Command. I get two cards out of that. Or I could go hit this, counter draw, have two cards for the Illumination. Yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. Blow this up, get a land, I'm gonna get a planes. Just counter draw, and then I've got like four looks at killing this Tarmogoyf. Yeah, that's that's what I came to there, Archmage. And with this, this Teferi is gonna give us so much more mana. Okay, so now we found an answer to Tarmogoyf. Is there another Liliana? Tarmogoyf. Double Tarmogoyf, you don't say. How many terminus do we have left? All right, Snapcaster Mage, you don't say. What I want to know is can I, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can't play Jace and guarantee. I can't play Jace and guarantee that I can Go snap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But how much more lands are it? Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I can't go Jace plus snap cryptic. So I think we just gotta go snap cryptic and then just wait. You bet they have brutality. They probably brutality is definitely a card that they could have in their main deck. I probably could I could like field this blooming marsh. 
Yeah, fielding there. I should use my field because I have mana. And we might hit like an Iskanta. There's no sense in doing this in the upkeep because they don't have a way to interact with the stack. And this target cryptic command. Let the thought seize resolve. When they go to combat, tap their team. Should I tap their team and bounce my Snapcaster Mage? No, I don't have enough. If I had another Cryptic Command, I would think about that. Yeah, if I had another cryptic command, tap creatures, draw a card. Clicks nice. All right, there's another cryptic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can go. Illumination plus this. So let's go like that. Leaves us dead to brutality, but. But I think besides that, we're in good shape. Well, not good shape, but like we are winning the game. <clears throat> okay, so that's annoying. So I, I think I'm actually going to go tap, tap, bounce my Snapcaster Mage. Uh, return. Because, like, I'm going to have to figure out, I might have to use my Cryptic Command again. Or not. Always yield. Yeah, Teferi is the absolute stones. This card is just so good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can negate anything. How am I dealing with this? I don't currently have a good way to deal with that besides like bouncing it with a cryptic command. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can go, I can click myself, but I don't have any card I want to get rid of. I feel like Cryptic bounced this treetop village for like a long time here. Jace, yeah, so I, like fighting this thing is going to be annoying. Colony can block, but like it just handcuffs me. But if he doesn't attack with it, then I can just play this Illuminations. You can't click your, you, it's a non-land card. Unless I'm crazy, which, you know. Let me choose a non-land card, yeah. All right, so now we should be in good shape.
Get this. I think I'm just gonna fire this colonnade up. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to Pound Town. Like, I think we're just looking to get this game over with. Especially because we got their next play covered. I could have also ousted my colonnade if, if, you know, if we're in that tough of a spot. Gonna snap negate. Still the logic knot and click if I want to. It's a two turn clock. All right. That one felt good. That one felt good. Like. I was pretty happy to win that one. So against the old black green deck, I think we want all of our two for ones. Um, his clicks don't seem that great. I'm not gonna lie. Timely's not really a two for one. It's just kind of a card that's pretty decent against. I don't really want Bane Slayer Angel because they're literally on the Veil deck. The only other cards I'm kind of thinking about are Vendillion Clicks and Negates. But Vendillion Click and Negate. Click is great against Liliana. I just don't know what else I want. I want my spot removal because I don't want to just die to Bob. Negate should be pretty fine. Teferi is very good. It's like I want these three cards, but I don't know what they're what else I want. Like, maybe logic knots weak, but like, am I just gonna trade to upgrade? Like, I kinda want I like my wraths, because they're just two for ones. The timely is very good against Liliana, and it blocks. Not good against Treetop Village. Detention Sphere is kind of medium because they're going to be packing Maelstrom pulses and decays, especially their black green. They might have like two. They might have like three Maelstrom pulses, and they're seventy-five. They're black green. So like, I do kind of want to get rid of this card. Um, I don't really want to get rid of any of my other cards. Like maybe this. We can go this for this. Seer and Visions is kind of mopey, but like with snap in conjunction with Snapcaster Mage is so good. But like maybe we're on the point of where it doesn't matter here. You believe in spheres? Yeah. This is a different deck. It's like a different deck completely. Like maybe like if we're snapping back, we shouldn't be snapping back Serum Visions in this version. So maybe we can just cut a Serum Visions and bring in another click. Let's try this. I really think Hieroglyphic Illumination is like Ancestral Visions, but better. I'm just really high on this card. Like, I think this card, like, I don't think, I don't think anybody should be playing Option their deck before they play Illuminations. I haven't played the deck, like, a lot, but the fact that Illumination has only been, like, marginally worse than Opt on the cycle side and just absolutely breaks the game open on the other side is really nice. This hand is not super exciting, but we're going to keep it because we don't like mulliganing against... The resource based game. Let me bring the other layer so quick, might not be as good. That makes sense there, counter speed. You need consistency, not advantage. And I think I would agree with that. And I think Serum Visions is the most consistent cantrip in the format. They mold a five, that is tough. Yield until next time step. All right, take your one mana kill creatures. 
Takes more Assassin's Trophy. That Assassin's Trophy would go well in my opponent's deck for sure. But I don't even think it would really matter. I'm really behind on time. I mean, it obviously would matter, but like everything their Assassin's Trophy is a two for one, and like making the land untapped is like they're then like essentially, you know, giving a lot more value. I like this deck. I don't know if, like, I need to get in the right mindset to play this deck. It's just different. Severe Cantor for one. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was looking for. That Liliana is going to be very annoying. So I don't think we're ever going to get to this Terminus, and I would like to just make all my land drops. So I kind of just want to ditch this Terminus. We have plenty of lands. I think we're going to... Like, especially if they go to ultimate this, because we might not stop this, we're going to want as many lands in play as possible. So the ultimate doesn't hurt us as bad. Yield until next end step. Yeah, I was I was kind of excited for a good Suvail cantrip. Like that would have been right at home in the old Death Shadow deck. Alright, let's deal with this now. I'm gonna get an island. I'm gonna get a planes. I moved my mic closer to me. OBS says we're decent. But this is why, like, this card, while it is very good, is, like, not the end-all be-all against this kind of a deck. Because your this effect is symmetrical. We are both depleting both of our resources. As soon as I find a way to pull ahead, all of a sudden, unless you have nothing and I have cards... But if I hit a Jace or something right there, then the game would be over. Because they just don't have the resources to what that's what this card does. And like th like there's just so many ways to go over the top of it. Now they're gonna murder half of my lands, but with nothing on the board, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna ditch this path to exile. I shouldn't have ditched. I, I just I shouldn't have ditched the land last turn. They left in decays. Um I'm going to field this in their draw step. Yeah, I mean, Teferi would be the stone. I, well, I probably shouldn't. Maybe this will influence their pile. They're going to go up seven. That's okay. They left in a lot of removal. We're going to play the land. If we play a creature, that would be nice. A creature here would be sweet. No, I'm not even going to float mana. Cascade Visions, please. 25 P territory. Who subs that one? Whose emotes are those? And like, I'm going to just sacrifice these. And we're still pretty fine here. Like, But again, it just again like this card is just not really mattering. I'm gonna ditch the path, I think, if they plus this, because like the timely 
He's a British bloke who is like Saffron Olive. Nice. Oh, Pleasant Kenobi. I know who that guy is. That guy's a part of the Cardboard Network, I think. If I get rid of the Timely of the Path, I'm going to want to remove the creatures, so I probably should get rid of the Timely. Whoa. That guy's ready. This guy is ready to go. Gaze of Granite. Just eight mana. Kill Teferi and Jace. That card's Yeah, it's like, I'm just going to make land drops and then kill this Liliana. Like, this card just doesn't matter. This is why this card just doesn't see as much play anymore, because, like, it's not even as good in the fair matches as, like, this card is so much worse in all the fair matches than it was six months ago, because, like, in the Jun mirrors, Bloodbraid Elf just mercs it, and in these blue mirrors, Teferi and Jace just go way over the top of this thing. Is it a flavor violation if you kill Jace with that card? I am not a flavorologist, therefore I do not know. Like, see, we're just going to hit a land here and kill this Liliana. And your card did nothing. Tilt. At least we get to be timely. Not going to block this. The thing I would like about keeping timely is it could have helped you get Liliana off the board. I didn't need to hit a creature. Them hitting that Bob, now that is big game. This is what's important. Because now I have to kill this Bob and deal with this. Liliana only mattered because of this Dark Confidant. So let's attack Liliana with two. Make it so Bob can't attack. Can't attack me. I'll just offer this trade. This is going to make it so this Liliana doesn't get out of colonnade range. And then we will colonnade it next turn. My opponents, this is the problem now. Yeah, the one we didn't want to. At least they drew treetop, which treetop's like super fine. And if we ever draw, like, a Teferi, Teferi or Jace, there's Treetop. So we're going to Merc that. They go up, they discard a card. See, this is also it doesn't matter, because like I have nothing. This Liliana is a one-sided effect right now. This is the problem. The old Bobby boy. Freaking Bab. What? They didn't come in with the Kalidus. I don't understand that. I am qualified. Oh, no, I didn't field. I looked over there and just didn't field. That sucks. All right, well, we're going to take a shot here from this treetop village that we didn't have to. Yeah, I am qualified there. <clears throat> Again, like, yeah, like, that just didn't do anything. That just, like, that card just kept the game at parity. It never really created an advantage for my opponent. Tom's qualified, yep. Yeah. Yep. Me and Tom were planning to go down. My wife's doing something with her friends that weekend, so I've got to, like, feel that situation out before I commit to going. It's, I guess it's a pretty important thing for my wife. I'm going to figure this out. All right, figure it out. Though, I think we're just going to kill Bob with this. I think we're just going to kill Bob. And then figure out this Kalidus problem later. I can also just chump out of it. 
I don't really want to animate my colonnade in front of this Kalidus because they've already shown us Fatal Push. They might not have that many Fatal Pushes, but... Alright, so that field... Does that field... If he kills my colonnade while it's a creature with this field, this gets a zombie, I think. We don't want that. Yeah, we don't we definitely don't want to do that. So let's just field this. This is one of my finals ladder. I'm flying down on Thursday and staying until Monday. You get no you get those points from your um, overseas flight, right? What is this? Alright, we'll take it. I think I'm just gonna chump this Cletus. I kind of want my life total to be reasonably high. Plus, if I end up chumping out there, I might be able to, like, snap timely something. I don't know. That's probably a loose thing to think about because, like, it's not what's going to happen realistically. This last card is going to be a lander removal spell. I don't really want to die on the Kalidas Hill yet, especially when I've got like, like I don't want him to get a zombie and be able to go wide if I top deck a Planeswalker. And again, does nothing. Literally does nothing. Like if you're if you top deck your Planeswalker on turn 14, it does nothing. Then like, what is it doing? Like that's unfortunate. That's the where we are in this format, and that's why these black green decks are not that good. God, we have nothing. We have nothing sweet and blue to flash back. I mean, I guess I can get this thing off the board with a path. But it's not really doing anything at the moment. I think I'm going to wait because the last thing that I want is for this, um, for them to hit like a Bob and then break the game open with a Bob. Like we've got Bob covered. I would like to save the Snapcaster Rage for when we hit like an Illumination or a whatever it is. Uh, an Illumination or like a Cryptic Command. Like we'll we'll probably end up doing it in a like next turn maybe. Well now I can fight try to block this and have negate to protect it. So I think we're gonna we're gonna like venture out a block here. Alright, we're not we're no longer gonna venture out a block. It also sucks that it cuts off double white from this. I guess now we're going to path this thing. And just like <coughs> die on the Bob Hill. If that's where we're, we're meant to be. We've got negate for this removal spell. My opponent doesn't seem like they know the Kalita. Like, if they would have killed the colonnade with Kalitas in play, it would have done so much more for them. All right, here comes a little 2 1 that could. All right, so we're 30 cards into our deck. We haven't seen a Planeswalker, a Cryptic Command, or an Illumination. And we're not dead. So I'm going to say my opponent is in a lot of trouble. We haven't even seen a Terminus either. Turn off auto yields. That's annoying. This thing's really annoying. <clears throat> Who needs blue spells? Seriously. We actually haven't hit a blue spell this game. Or I mean, we have the negate. 
We yeah, we haven't cast a this is the only blue spell we've cast this game. Give me a Teferi off the top. I'll settle for a Jace. That's pretty gas. That's this is why this is so much better than Opt. In these late games, you just break the game open. Jesus. Putting both of our plans. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm worried about resolving, honestly. So I'm not going to hold this negate. Like I'm, I'm definitely going to try to chump block this thing. If I get through another turn, I get through another turn. Like I, there, I don't really have a lot of urgency with the cards I have coming. Like the only thing that like would be really worth me casting this negate on would probably be like a maelstrom pulse on that search for his canta. But that's why illuminations is sweet. That opt would have obviously because like our cards are very good, you know, that we just hit. <coughs> yeah, I don't even think we're just gonna hold this negate. Like I'll just chump block. And then win the game with a Teferi and a whatever. I've got I've got like a colonnade left in my deck. Didn't attack. Are there are no creatures in the graveyards. There really are no creatures in the graveyards. Holy shnikes. No. Yes. Again, I want to hold this path just for a um a bob, but like we're going to get to the point where we're going to start accruing so many cards that we're just going to fire our cards off on anything that we get the opportunity to to do. <clears throat> Especially now that we can go path and negate. Yeah, dude, Illuminations is gas. All right, we're going to just use our mana and a turn here. Now well, we could play the click. Yeah, let's play the click. Or click ourselves, get rid of this Terminus. All right, I've had enough of this thing. Let me go up with this first. All right, just in case one wasn't enough. Make a land drop, crack my opponent for five. Probably could just like activate his Kanta for funsies and untap his Kanta. It seems like something that I wouldn't mind doing. We can just we can take a Jace. Liliana the Last Hope. All right, let's scoop it up. Yeah. Well, that went well. Turn the details. I don't even remember this match. That's why another thing, like, I, I also just think, like, whenever I've played against the black green decks with this deck, like, I used to, like, Abzan used to be the Jun deck that beat up on the grindy decks, and now it's just like, they just don't because you just go over the top of what they're doing. And that's why this deck's just like Jund. Like you don't even re like you play control cards, but you don't really play control. You just kind of like play high quality cards, play high quality cards, play high quality cards, slam the highest quality cards, and then win. Another overgrown tomb deck. Like I'm worried about like the you know aggressive Jund plan. 
Don't play a Bob. Okay. Yeah, dude. Like that my opponent had a Liliana the Veil in play for how long that game? And like the game wasn't that close. If my opponent Liliana's me, I'm gonna discard this terminus. Exactly. Like, you just can't play a mid-range deck in Modern because there are so many decks that, like, beat you in so many different ways. And that's why, like, Assassin's Trophy is not going to fix that. What are you doing? I'm not going to crack this fetch land. We're going to just... We're just going to... Hopefully hit a land here. I'm going to detention sphere this. All right, we didn't hit a land. I could just path it and not crack my land. Save this detention sphere for like a Liliana. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just like small ball plays, but let's just keep our flooded strand around. If we hit land drops, we're going to win. I might just take a shot from this Tarmogoyf too. Like, wow, it's a Sultai deck. Okay. Now I'm, this is like a, gen, no, it's not a Gen Shadow deck. I guess we're just going to take a shot from this. This Grim Flare, no, it's another Tarmogoyf. Oh, now we can D-Sphere. So they know... I don't really want to D-Sphere this because they know we have D-Sphere and they just played a second one out. So... Now we can just kind of set on this Crypt Command. Jun puts up consistent results in Modern. I think Jun puts up consistent results in Modern because a lot of people play Jun. Because it's a fun deck to play. It is. Like, Jun's a lot of fun to play. But not a lot of people put up consistent results. All right. All right. We're going to counter target spell and draw a card. We could tap the team, but let's just draw a card here. We can deal with these Tomboyfs. It, it sees play because of... it does. Jun does well because of sheer volume. It's just not a very good deck. But it is fun to play, so a lot of people play it. Like, I don't think you see UW just keeps getting playable cards. Exactly. All right, field. So I have to sit here and ask myself, like, what is their last card? And if their last card is Abrupt Decay, which I think it is, then, like, we are dead if we go for that. On the other hand, we can just jam our boy. We can just jam the hero of Dominaria. And then hold up a path to exile as well. Which I'm kind of excited about. Oh shit, is this a counter spell? We're dead. I didn't even think I didn't even play around a main deck counter spell out of a deck like this. So that makes sense why they jammed there. Yeah, we got, got there. I was like, I thought to myself, well, they don't have counter spells in their main deck. They'll have counter spells in their sideboard. Nope. They had counter spells in their main deck. And we got got. I hate doing that. I hate dying with spells in hand like that. So let's see. These dispels are probably pretty good. The Dispels and the Negates are probably good. Like, I'm thinking about these cards. Yeah, dude, we got Counter Squad. They got us. All right, I don't want this Detention Sphere. So what do they have? Like, what do they have in their deck? Probably don't want three negates. Three negates is probably a lot. Oh, 
Let's say we don't want these. I don't think these clicks are very good. The clicks just don't brawl. What was that counter squall? The counter, counter squall. So this is what we got so far. If I don't think they have Liliana, then Bane Slayer Angel and Lyra are really good. I think I want to see more of their deck before I start thinking about what they have. And like I don't really want Rest in Peace unless they have like traversed the Uvenwald and Grimflare. Yeah, I think we're just going to keep this. We might board a little more once we see exactly what they're doing. Dude, the old Counter Squall. I specifically like was thinking to myself, I'm not going to play around Counter Magic. Because, you know, most of like those Jun-style decks, Jun Shadow, they play Counter Spells and they're bored. You know, they don't play main deck Counter Spells. But nope, we got we got main deck counterspelled. Was not pretty. And Robinson, how you doing? All right, well, let's play first. This hand's not very good, but we're going to keep it. We can field to fix our mana, and I just really don't want a mulligan against this deck. And timely reinforcement should be pretty good. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I would not keep this hand like in the dark or against a lot of decks, just like against the Thoughtseize deck. I think this is just like what you want. We don't want that second draw, though. Um, I think we want to put this on top and then put this underneath Put that on top too. Because like we're going to fix our mana. And then when we fix our mana, we're gonna want a card like Path to Exile. <clears throat> so we know we're only gonna be able to keep one of these cards that we look for here. Oh, there's a search though. We probably can put this on the bottom. Let's put this on top. That search for his canta is gonna be. A good one for the home team. I might just jam the search next turn instead of like fielding the setup. Just getting the search into play is good. They can't leave a card like Abrupt Decay in their deck. Yeah, I think I'm just going to like. I think we're going to play this search for his Kanta. How's it going, Psychotic Porcupine? F6 through this. I guess we could have kept that island. Always yield. No, we're going to want a Snapcaster Mage at some point. I'm going to try to get this thing off the table on their turn. Probably think I'm going to upkeep field this tar pit. Or like field whichever. Like they're probably going to get breeding pooled, and then I can't really cut them off a of color. 
Or like, I mean, they probably play enough basics as well. Yeah. So let's just go upkeep. Let's smoke this tar pit. I don't think there's anything they can do to use the mana. Like, they, if they, they don't have anything in their graveyard, it's not like they can snap something back. And then I'm just going to path this Goyf. We can't beat a Jace at the moment. Okay, so that resolves, which is nice. So the next turn we can, like, snap Serum Visions. If they do just jam a Jace, we could be in a little bit of trouble, which looks like what's about to happen. That's not good. <coughs> maybe I should have... Maybe they don't go for it if I've got mana up. So maybe that was loose to do. We can't even cast our Jace. I think we got bin this. Uh, field this. Fix our mana. It'll get us to flip this search. We do get to wasteland them, which means our ghost quarter is also a wasteland. Scar probably depending on their reliance on double. Okay, that makes sense. And then we can also just sneak this Snapcaster Mage in at the end of their turn, like. Or if they play two creatures, we can like snap timely. If we play two creatures and we hit a land, then we're going to, well, Liliana, some dual Planeswalker action. We can ditch a Terminus. At least our Escanta is going to flip. They just stick twice. Wow, my opponent's deck is like, put this into our graveyard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want this. Flip this, yes. So I'm going to cast this timely reinforcements and then snap serum visions. Oh, I could save the snap path to deal with this Tarmogoyf. It's probably a better thing to do. Though Snap Serum Visions, if I can hit one of my powerful cards, like I think I'd rather do that. I want to use my mana. Alright, let's just keep the card draw two for one. Play to land. <coughs> you don't have lights or Yeah, I don't have the second one to hit the terminus. So I'm gonna ditch the terminus. Let me check up with Liliana. Mm hmm. So they're going to field my Escanto, which kind of feels bad. But they're also strip mining them. So they, they don't get to get a land out of this. I do. We do lose our Illuminations, which is on top. But, you know, such is life. God. They've just got the whole team here. Yeah, this is a. Uh, this is gonna be tough to beat. Like this is just so much advantage. 
and I'm assuming they have counter spells. Like, it is nice that our search is going to be able to flip. We are harassing their mana enough to where we can kind of make it so even though they're drawing a lot of cards, they can't really do anything. We were going to ditch the timely because my opponent might flood the board with creatures here, and then the terminus will be good. We did we did get that. So I mean, our opponent's generating a lot of advantage, but they're not necessarily like burying us. <clears throat> I need like a Teferi. The problem is they're likely going to just counter Teferi. Yeah, we're just going to take this. Because then we can start like attacking one of their Planeswalkers. We are going to ditch that. All right. All right, pass not bad because pass actually pretty good. So we're going to be attacking, probably attacking Liliana the Last Hope. We probably have to attack the Lilianas because the Jace isn't really doing a lot because they just don't have lands. We need to make sure that the Lilianas don't ultimate. Yeah, like the fact that they're choked on mana is what really is helping us out. Alright, we're going to let that resolve, and then we're going to kill this Goyf. We're like kind of close here. Surprise. Like, if we can hit a Teferi or a Jace of our own, we're not that far off. Them hitting another land is pretty bad for us, though. <clears throat> Who wins? One Searchy Boy. Or three Planeswalkers. That's not good. So, let's... Okay, so there's Teferi, which we're going to need Teferi at some point. Can't do it now. So we're going to attack this Liliana the Veil. And then we probably have to tuck Liliana the Veil next turn. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. I'm going to let this happen. This means they're going to ult Liliana, and then we're going to just keep whatever pile like lets us cast Teferi. And then hopefully, they don't know about this Dispel, which is nice. And the fact that we just got them to piss away a Snapcaster is pretty good as well. Oh, I am really far behind, but like... You know, we've got a shot. Blue, white, blue, white. Like, we are clawing here. Probably going to keep whichever pile has more lands in it. Unless my opponent does this. And then I'm going to keep the one with five. I'm going to rip a land. We're going to sacrifice these. I'm going to rip a land, and then we're going to play Teferi, and I'm going to tuck this Jace, or tuck this Liliana Last Hope, probably. Because I doubt they're going to have two counter spells. We just need them to not play a creature here. And if they do play a creature, we got to hit a land and go up, probably. Discard spell is pretty bad for the home team. Tassier. All right, land. Okay. So 
So I think I've got to go up with, my, with this thing. Okay, another counter spell, man. God, yet another counter spell. You bastard. All right. I, I yield to the second counter spell. Oh, we were in it that game. Like, I think, like, let's just say that that Teferi would have resolved. We would have ticked up into a cryptic command. Next turn, we would have drawn cryptic command. One, two, three, four, five, six. We could have gone tick up, cryptic draw, cryptic draw. Yeah, I mean, I think for for how much they had going on, the fact that we were in that game, I thought was, you know, impressive. Like, they snuck, like, maybe I kept a poor hand in the second game. Like maybe I should have mulliganed because my, my mana wasn't really set up. But good on my opponent for jamming that Jace. Like, they just were like, all right, this is how we're going to win. The fact they jammed that Jace on th four. And maybe I shouldn't have, like, been as aggressive as I was with, like, the fielding or whatever I did on that turn. To hope they don't do it. I mean, I couldn't stop it anyways. It was a sweet match. Game one, I just got too confident, and that's why I lost that one. All right, we'll keep this. I'm going to go fetch probably Hollow Fountain with this land, because if I want to hold up Logic Knot, I'm going to need an untapped blue source, and that's not guaranteed with anything else. I hope everyone's having a good night. I appreciate y'all for hanging out tonight. You guys are, have all been very enjoyable. Opponents resolving their mulligan still. Hollow Fountain. Um, I don't think I want either of these. I think we're just looking for like Cryptic Command, Hieroglyphic Illumination, like just card draw. I could be like, you know, there's probably matchups where we want both of those cards. Or not together, but either or of them. Place unclaimed territory. Okay. So the terminus would have been decent. I do like search for his canto a lot in this matchup, just because it flips into another land. For not having any counter spells, my opponent takes the time. If they don't, I might just D sphere the. Um, especially if they don't hit a land drop here, I think I'm definitely going to D sphere this Ether Vial. Yes, for sure. I think we're going to want to, now that we know what's going on, we want to get rid of that. We definitely didn't want that one. So this might be a noble hierarch. Yeah, it kind of thinks that it's a hierarch. Like I would have rather had it been a another champion just because it would cut their mana off. Now they can like Mantis Rider me. Another vial, okay.
We're definitely gonna hit this uh, this canopy if we don't hit something good here. I don't think that counts as good. Okay, so now let's go hit this. Get a planes. Play this colonnade and let's hope we don't die. <clears throat> as we could die. I, I think humans is a cool deck. I think it's cool that there's a um, that a deck with 36 creatures or 37 creatures in it can dominate a format. Just the bugle. So what do we do? We need like a terminus or we're dead here. Because what is this? This is five. Got an image coming. Okay, so then here comes, what is this? Oh, this, the trigger doesn't matter. So this is nine damage. Yes. Whew. Always yield. Cast this. And now we're going to hit this land. It's a miracle. <coughs> now I still need a way to like pull ahead, but the fact that I can actually Counterspell something is kind of sweet. So we know they have a logic. We know we have, they have a phantasmal image, and that's it. This search is going to put us ahead, though. Um, I think that we don't want this while we're going to have our search flip, because we don't want to spend our mana just cantripping. We want to, like, use a, as canta, so we have to free up mana for that. Yeah, it's not necessarily GG. We're at a life, we're at a low life total, and we don't really have a good way to. Yeah, like this could be bad. This is probably like a Mantis Rider. What do we got here? We got a Bugler. Okay, Bugler is way better for us than Mantis Rider. At least we can block Mantis Rider though with our Colonnade, so it wouldn't have been that bad. Puts militia bugler in their hand, okay. Got a cryptic. So let's just counterspell this. So I could bounce this. Ether vial. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to cast Cryptic Command no matter what. So I can't go Cryptic Command plus as Kanta. So I'm just going to play this search and then sit on this cryptic. Yeah, well, Death Shadow is the same thing, right? Like, <laughs> if this Humans deck was in the format, the Death Shadow deck would still be around everywhere. There's always going to be aggressive, disruptive decks in Modern that are the, probably the best decks in the format because the format's so wide open. Whether it's Death Shadow, Band Spirits, Humans, even the Modular Affinity deck.
Yeah, he's going to be able to image me unless I go, like, counter the image. I just counter the image also. But that's a little risky to, like, a Mantis Rider. So I might just, like, let the image happen. I basically, I lose in the spot my opponent is a Mantis Rider. Or a land plus Thalia's Lieutenant. I think I just kind of want to, like, try to last as long as possible. So I'm already going to wait until they attack. Then I'll just tap their team and draw a card. Or I can go, like, tap their team, bounce this Aether Vial. <coughs> Freebooter. Okay. So, beginning of combat. <coughs> so, I can just go tap bounce, but then I can't. So, let, I'm going to let him attack. And then we'll just. Let's just go to one. And then I'm going to bounce their ether vial and draw a card. Return target opponents to the hand, draw a card. Because this just helps with like the Mantis Rider instant speed shenanigans. <coughs> yes. No. I feel like just wrathing again. Yeah, I want to survive long enough to be able to wrath them. Noble Hierarch is good. We're just going to tap draw again. It's nice that they can't cast this Freebooter. One, two, three, four. Beginning of combat. Tap draw. Does suck we can as Kanta. But we are just we're starting to hit land drops now. So now we'll negate the ether vial. No. So now we'll pass. We really have to hope they don't hit a a land because <coughs> land lets them cast freebooter now we're probably dead one two three four five six seven eight nine that thing's uncountable so it comes into play. We let it resolve, and now we're going to activate our Ascanta. Yeah, Venser would, would be sweet. All right, so we'll take this path to exile because that keeps us in it. Sucks that we had to get rid of our Jace, but like it would like a Jace or a Teferi would be nice right now to keep us keep us going. No, no. OK, 
cast it. <clears throat> okay, so now we're looking. We hit a path. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to take out this Thalia because we have to kill both of these creatures, and this Thalia taxes us. Sucks so much, I have to answer every single one of these creatures. Yeah, Cell of Wreckage is really good. No, no. Let's get a Jace. And now we just play this Jace, and we just hope our opponent doesn't hit a Mantis Rider. Even though they're, they're probably like due for a Mantis Rider. Put this on the bottom, yes. Okay. All right, we can deal with both of those. No. No. Yep, you're right. You're right, Soren. That would have been that would have been better to do. So now we use the Ascanta to clear the Jace. We might be dead. Are we just dead now? Oh, do I have to use the Jace to bounce? One, two, three, four, five, six. Gross. What am I out? I'm going to do this regardless. Always yield. I thought I just didn't even think about it and thought I needed a brainstorm. So let me think. I should do this on my opponent's turn. And I probably should. I'm going to wait for them to go to combat because I can either cycle this illumination and look for cryptic command, but if they attack with two cards, then I likely need to draw Meddling Mage. So, Meddling Mage is good. I've got two paths in my deck. I've got one cryptic command in my deck, and I've got two terminuses. Yeah, elixir would be sweet. Yeah, so I think I'm going to cycle. I do have one Snapcaster in my deck. So I think the cycle is what I want to do. It's, it also depends on what my opponent names here. God, we bricked on the bottom. We bricked on like the top six cards of our, five cards of our deck there. I have two paths in my graveyard. <coughs> it is kind of a tough name. Your clicks are on the bottom. They're thinking about it too. This is a tough name.
Yeah. Like, they name Snapcaster. So, so now, because they named Snapcaster, my outs are my last two paths, my two clicks, which are on the bottom, last two paths, two clicks, let's say both, are both clicks on the bottom, <coughs> two paths, two terminus, two cryptics. Is that worth taking two cards to look at to look at four or one card to look at theirs? Draw not cycle. Both in one terminus on the bottom. So then if I have a terminus on the bottom, then I should cycle this to hit cryptic command. Because I do have one cryptic. Yeah, I think we're going to cycle this. Got us. <coughs> what was the last? Let's see what the last card was. So we path this. Next turn, we draw for our turn. We probably ditch that with our Escanta. We hit Serum Visions. We brainstorm with Jace, which is one, two, three. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And we just cut our counter spells and I think one Jace. I think this is how we're going to do it. Do you hear I was telling uh, It still has been. It still have to be the top card. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you can't term it. You can't draw for Jace for Terminus. I mean, so was it right to draw? I guess it cuts off Cryptic Command. If we do it like that. All right, we're gonna keep this one. We got a Baneslayer Angel. We're just gonna pray my opponent can't answer it. How have you felt this matchup? I don't think this matchup's actually that great, Tannen, which kind of makes me not want to play this deck. Like if 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 I if like the blue white deck doesn't like routinely beat the humans deck, I'm a little nervous. I don't think I definitely need to bounce with Jace. Like there was one, there were two creatures on the board. I had an answer in my hand, and I could then I had a brainstorm plus Escanta. So like I had whatever six looks. I had six or seven looks at cards to deal with that other thing. Um, let's put this on the bottom. Let's put this on top. <coughs> Going two out, cycle one with a quick and terminus out of the picture. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I don't think this is like a knockout matchup. It's not as good as I, I think it should be, which could be like my fault as well. What is this? What are they doing? Are they just going to match Spider Me? So now that we're getting Mantis Ridered, do I want to play my Timely? Play timely or play this search. I kind of want to play this timely reinforcements because I don't want to just like die. I gain six life. 
And that gives me enough time to go brainstorm plus deal with Jace, then play search. <coughs> I don't think any deck in the format beats humans 70% of the time. If your deck did beat humans 70% of the time, it would see a lot of play. So what do we got here? What do we name and would turn this? Path to Exile. Okay. So we're gonna now we're gonna get a terminus out of this one. This should be terminus. Path plus terminus is the combo. It doesn't see like it doesn't see if it if it saw sixty percent if it won sixty percent of the matches against humans it would see a seventy percent of the matches it would see a hell of a lot more play than it does now. All right, so let's see if we can hold down the board and then land this Bane Slayer Angel next turn. And then hopefully we can hide, have our Jace hide behind um, these meddling, or these, uh, the Baneslayer Angels and the Soldiers. So I might just take a bunch of damage here. The second one's on Terminus. Terminus and Path. But lots of play. It's like, what, 6% of the format, 7% of the format? Maybe eight. Like, with humans being the most popular, humans is probably like 10. It did see a lot of play, yes. Yes. Wow. I'm gonna image, what are you naming? If this is Bane Slayer Angel, I'm gonna cry. Cryptic Command. Alright, always yield. Let's put that in our graveyard. So, I think I'm just going to jam this Bane Slayer Angel. Like, play this Angel. I eat this. Next turn. Or I can, like, play Jace, tick down on this, and then cast Terminus next turn. So I'm probably going to take a lot of damage doing that. And if I do that, I need to land, but if they're going to kill my Jace. I think it's, I probably should have kept that, I, I probably should have kept that land and then gone Jace, bounce this. But that's like the most clear telegraph of all time. <coughs> or I could just play this Bane Slayer Angel and then like try to maneuver with my planeswalkers. We're in a tough spot. I think I'm gonna hit this with Jace. Just get a creature out of my opponent's hand or get a creature um, off the board and then get ready, be ready to impact the board next turn. But like, I probably tossed this by not getting rid of the planes. I was saying if it would beat humans 70% of the time, it would be a lot more than 7%.
if they attack my Jace and my Jace dies, we get to flip our search, which is solid. Because it'll give us another card. Whoa, they didn't attack with this? What could this mean? Keswick Malcontents, if I go block, block. Oh, my opponent just went sad face. All right, so now we're just going to go. Is there a card that I want to trade with? Trade here, take three. Three, six, take five, go to seven. Okay. Well, that was so stupid of me. That was so stupid to do. No, I just lost my. That was so stupid. I was like, but I was like, I'm pretty much gear. I feel like I'm guaranteed to hit my land with this brainstorm. So that's what I was thinking. I should have done like the worst case scenario and I should have just chumped it out, kept my life total high. No, oh, that's kind of nice. I think we're going to keep this and then hope my three hits off Brainstorm save me. All right. <coughs> I want all these cards, unfortunately. All right. Now we get to next turn. Play Baneslayer Angel and Path to Exile and Brainstorm. So we should be we should be in good shape now. And this flips. Um, no, we're gonna want that eventually, but we'll flip this. Play this, play the angel. Let's make sure that I can, yeah, there we go. Play a get our girl out there. And now we, once we get a shot in with this, we should be good. <coughs> we have like a path to exile to fix any, you know, shenanigans. And then the turn after, we can go Timely Reinforcements, plus Teferi if we have to. That Sin Collector is annoying, but what are you going to do? We're going to get rid of this uh, Thalia right now. They're going to get our... They're going to get our Timely. All right, there we go. Let's toss both of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That makes 10. I think I have enough to field plus to fairy and snap path. Yeah, I do.
get this, take this up, and then attack with Baneslayer Angel. Then that should do it. And then we just path this, path this, trade with this, and then we're good. That's annoying. Well, it's not really annoying because it's still, the same thing still happens. <coughs> path to exile. Path this. Oh man, Moto's. I gotta restart Moto in between games. And we're just gonna fate seal now. Fire up this colonnade, and then just two turn clock it. I guess it's two turns either way, but I'm going to play faster for my last, the last game though. Meddling Mage on the bottom. No, you can draw that. Untap these two. <coughs> All right. I'm going to restart Moto here for a second. So give me a one second, everybody. I appreciate everybody for coming up and hanging out tonight. Got, what, 50 people in the chat? That's always sweet. I appreciate the support. If you guys like what you see, hit the follow button. If you're on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're on Twitch, go over to YouTube. If you're on YouTube, go over to Twitch. All that stuff is linked below, wherever you are to make that easy. Uh, Card Hoarder sponsors the stream. They're the best bot chain in the business. So if you have magic online needs, you should check them out. And Gamer Craze is a store in upstate New York where I learned to play Magic. Their Crystal Commerce is linked below. They foster a college environment, so you should definitely check them out. They've got a lot of really good prices if you need to buy and sell cards. And last, my Twitter's linked below. You should check me out on Twitter there. I pretty much tweet about Magic, my dog, and beer. I'm a big beer fan, so I like the, all the beers. The breweries down in Alexandria, Virginia are always nice, so... You should go check that out. And I occasionally tweet about sports. But, yeah, that's all linked below, no, no matter if you're on YouTube or on Facebook. So now we got to win a game against humans on the draw, which makes me nervous. Why are they playing control? I just grabbed this, like, so I just picked this deck up because it's popular. There's really no reason why. Like, I, I don't play this deck very often. I'm trying to learn how to play it if I need to. Magic Online's coming. Like I, I would like to have my goal as like a magic player for modern to be able to play every Thoughtseize slash Snapcaster deck. And I gotta figure out how I sideboarded again. To play every to be able to play every snap Snapcaster slash Thoughtseize deck. And um, and then to be able to play Ironworks, so that's this is just what I'm doing here. I'm gonna keep this hand. I've got a path and a search. My opponent mulligan. 
which we always appreciate. Nope, well, that's the wrong time to draw that one. <coughs> Probably should have played that one. I'm going to go to Atlanta, but I'm going back and forth between Blue White and American. Um, thank you for the YouTube sub. What do we got? We have named Path to Exile. Could Dan ward it and hit that and respond to that trigger, but that might not be appropriate to say. So we're kind of in trouble now. We have, like, we're a long way to this terminus. It's an A plus in my books. I have a champion. All right, let's ditch this field. Snapcaster. So I will Snapcaster ambush Viper this. I think. You guys worth doing to unlock my path to exile? I'm probably going to cycle my illumination before I do anything. How's it going, Dalloway? All right. We can deal with that. I should have cycled my should have cycled my illumination first. That was a mistake. <coughs> that was not good to do. We're still gonna do it anyways. We're not gonna we we just muffed out. Let's not compound our mistake anymore. I kind of think I want. I don't really want that. Yeah, let's ditch that. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to definitely path this Thalia. Because that's going to put six cards in our graveyard. Then we can ditch the last one, get the fifth card in the graveyard, <coughs> and then play Teferi and tick up with a path. Now if they play Meddling Mage, let's just get rid of this right now. I almost ran this deck through a league. Yeah, I I've been I've picked it up. I don't think it's I'm glad you're here, so I don't have to waste any more tickets. Yeah, it's definitely like I don't know how to describe it. Like it's obviously like it's just a gen deck. You know, like it's not it doesn't really feel like a control deck. It's like you just kind of play your cards and tap out and overpower people. God, if this is a all right, so what are we naming here? Bugler. So that's a problem. This means we can't. If we draw a land, then we can. Oh, they, no, they named Terminus. So big brain move. They have a Thalia's Lieutenant on the way. That's nice. We kind of need this land, right? So how do I win? I probably get that Cryptic Command back. That's how I win. So they have a Thalia's Lieutenant, so let's three, six, nine. Thalia's Lieutenant on the dot kills me. Nice. I have to ditch this, flip my Ascanta, and then hit another land. That's how we win. Well, he's got Terminus named, so I need like a Supreme Verdict. That's likely not going to do it. All right, we're still going to play. We're still playing Magic. No, we're not because we can't. We only have one white source. Dead. Put on the bottom, I guess.
And now let's just hope our opponent doesn't do it. We learned a name. Oh, I could have GQ'd my island there. No, I should have just, I could have gone GQ this, then path and hit. That would have given me at least another turn. Yeah, that was a mistake. I just tossed that. That's the old end of the stream, tired, throwing that. Maybe my opponent will mess the math up. Because I could have gone right here and then, like, hit this thing. And then I'm probably, like, still. But then I had a... Uh, well, no, I didn't have this. I didn't have the whatever it is coming because I would have shuffled it away. Yeah, that's I made that mistake. Yeah, I tossed that. Yeah, I tossed this one here. So let's think here. Yep. Yeah, yeah that, that I have no one to blame there but myself. All right, let's go back to the deck there. I, I wonder how it would have ended up. Okay. So I got to work with my sideboard here, but I think I've played this deck long enough to know kind of what it does and know how it works. This is a deck where I think if I could pin what I was going to play against, it would be nuts. Like, if I could just, like, build the right...